Okay guys, so welcome back. Uh, in this episode we will first off start by uh, fixing up some issues that uh, a lot of you guys are having uh, regarding the pathfinding. So the thing is, <clears throat> if we head into the... Um, no, not the fader, we're heading to pathfinder. And we do have that script over here. So the thing is that this, let me resize this. So this get point in this grid, grid end, this can sometimes result in a null pointer exception. And if that occurs, well, then the game crashes. So I'll actually show you. So if we head into the player script and under... Uh, over here, we can say velocity dot y uh, plus equals, let's say 0 0.01 times delta or 0 0.1. So this will just make the player's y, uh, y position increase. Uh, he will start floating up in the air and this will result in a crash. And I'll tell you guys why. As you can see, we are lifting slowly but surely. And there it goes. Well, there it crashes, and this is due to the uh, just as the uh, just as the uh, error message says here uh, cannot convert argument two from null to int. So argument two, which is this argument, this is null pointer, and this is due to the fact that the monster is trying to get to our position, and when our y position is not on the uh, on the index 0, or rather when the y position is any other variable than 0, then the, the monster will try to get, for instance, he'll try to get to y position 1. That is not a, a valid vector uh, in the indices array. Um, <clears throat> so we'll have to fix that. We need to make sure that when we're trying to get to a position, we need to make sure that it uh, it's within the indices array and this can easily be done by calling var let's say <clears throat> index start equals equals get uh, get point index grid start and index end equals get point index grid end if index start um, equals null or index end equals null that will just return because so if either this index start or index end is null we can't find a valid path to the player um, <clears throat> so so as I said this can happen if if you have jumping for instance so if you're jump if the player is jumping he will try to get to the, a y position that is not within the indices array, and in my game, for example, for example, we do not have uh, jumping as a feature, but you might have jumping as a feature in your game. So you can limit the grid start and grid end to always look at the same position on the y-axis as in zero. Okay, so we can say grid start dot y equals zero, grid start dot oops, grid end dot y equals zero so this will just result in if the player is jumping for instance his y position is maybe 1.4 or something i don't know we will just reset we'll just reset the 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 y position of the target to be at zero and this will still make the player be, uh, this will still make the monster be able to find the player so we can leave that in as well. So if we run the game now, oh, first off, we need to make sure to remove the velocity.y stuff, resize it, and let's head over to the monster and just make sure that he, whoa, where am I? Oh yeah, just to make sure that he is still trying to find us and everything works, yeah, there it is, cool. All right. Perfect. Um, so now to the second part, 
which will be to make the player be, have have a chance to win, or at least, well, just uh, just change the scene when he when he collects all the orbs. Just change the scene to to the menu, and uh, and when he dies, just change the scene to the scene to the menu as well. Uh, but yeah, we can start by implementing that. So head into the monster, or rather uh, the level scene. And we do have on orb collector here. At the moment, we're just printing you once. We can just call get tree dot change scene to the menu, the main menu scene. So here you can, at, for instance, have another scene called win scene that will, yeah, give the player some visual feedback that it just won or or, or whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, but I'll just change the scene back to the main menu once he has collected all the orbs that are scattered around the maze. So once that is done, we'll head into the monster script. And yeah, so at the moment when he hits us, or rather when he when he gets close to the to the player, we just print out some stuff. So we'll actually change that. So we'll We'll, first off, we'll see that we'll have to check that if body dot name equals player, we'll make sure that the body that is interacting with is the player. We call body dot die, and this is a function that we will be creating. So body uh, dot name is just the name of the parent node or uh, the body node. So in our in our example. It's player. And let's head into the player script. Okay, so we'll do a couple of things here. Uh, when we die, we will start to shake the camera for a couple of seconds and, and we'll start to fade out the scene as well. And once it's faded out, we will we will change the scene back to the main menu. So this First off, needs to uh, have a the player needs to have a a fader. So, whoops, let's instantiate one of those. It will start to be fully transparent. Perfect. So we will also create two new variables. So var shake amount equals zero point zero one, and also var uh, we need another is dying <coughs> equals false is dying equals false yeah so when we die we set is dying equals true and before we do anything before we process our input or process our movement we check if is dying and if we are dying we will start to shake the camera so this can be done by calling shake shake amount times equal plus equal sorry zero point zero two times delta, and we'll say camera. We do have reference to the camera. Yes, uh, offset horizontal offset equals rand range one to negative one to one times shake amount and we'll have to do the same to our vertical offset and we need to call randomize as well in the ready function this just makes sure that um, that we get unique random values each time we call a random function okay so you know what I think we should Try it out to see if the ca the camera starts shaking when we are when we get hit by the by the monster. So let's get over to him. And here he is, and our camera starts shaking. Perfect, cool. And now we'll also fade out the scene once we have get caught by the monster. So we need a reference to the to the fader. So on ready var fader equals fader, 
and we connect a signal to the fader. Fade finished, self on fade finished. And we will create this function. And once the fade is finished, we change the scene. So get tree dot change scene, and we change the scene to the main menu. And for instance, in this case, you can you can change this to a dying menu or or whatever. But I'll just change it back to the main menu for now. So, um, so when the, the fade is finished. We change the scene, but we need to initialize, we need to start the fade as well. So fader dot fade out in not fade in, fade out. And I think that the fade we need a we need a way to set time for, for the fade as well. So let's let's just find the monster and see how fast the fader fades out. Okay, that's that's too fast, I think. So let's let's just create an, a variable inside fader called func set uh, uh, um, whatever. What's what, what what's it called? It's called playback speed. So yeah, so yeah. So let's create a function called set playback speed. So the animation player dot playback speed equals speed, and we set the fade speed fader dot set fade out playback speed to zero point twenty five. So that's a fourth of the current time. Uh, I think that is good enough. Let's get over to the player or the monster. Sorry, I, I it's so annoying that the, the orb is glowing through. <laughs> Need to fix that. Okay, and cool. And there, there we die. I just noticed that I can still walk when I'm dying, and that is something that I don't want. So, in this if statement, if it's dying after we shake and everything, we just return. We don't process any input and we just don't process any movement. Alright, so one final thing. We should add another sound. So I'll just pop this one in. Where did it go? Monster Grawl, perfect. Let's create a new audio stream player. Audio stream player 3D, yeah, I think that. So we call this one Grawl, and we give this wave file to the Grawl node, and we save. And once we hit the player, we also call uh, Whisper, which can just stop him. And grow, play this guy. All right. So let's try that one out. Increase the sound a bit. I'm not even sure if you can hear the sound. Let me just make some changes. All right. I think you can hear the sound now at least. I don't know. Okay, that is dope. That is dope as hell. Let's head into the player. No, not the player. Yes, the player. When we die, uh, we can set this to maybe 1.15. Yeah, let's try it out. Let's see if we can hear the monster growl a little longer. I always take the wrong path here. Where am I? Hate this maze. Okay. 
Let's approach the monster. Oh, yeah, that is dope. That is scary. That is awesome. And this episode is done. Okay, guys, so peace out. Uh, stay healthy, stay cool, and all that fun stuff. And subscribe. Bye.